In the mountains above Irwin, Tennessee, the remains of a town long abandoned, sometimes forgotten, still stand. For nearly a hundred years, Lost Cove stood in proud isolation. Many don't even know it's there, but Kate Nemrich found out about it, hiked up to Lost Cove, and tonight brings us part one of two of the history and memories that still live on for the families who called Lost Cove home. A once thriving community in the mountains between Unicoi County, Tennessee and Yancey County, North Carolina. For nearly 50 years, neither state would lay claim to Lost Cove, spurring rumor and lore for what was happening high up in the hills. It's no easy feat to get to Lost Cove. By foot is the only option. Even when it was inhabited, paved roads never entered the town. The origins of Lost Cove are shrouded in mystery. Some claim it dates back to Daniel Boone. According to historian Christy Smith, no records indicate it was formed before the Civil War. The first person in here was Morgan Bailey, Stephen Morgan Bailey, and he was a Union soldier with the 3rd Mountain Infantry. Deeds before that, before the early 1900s, are they're pretty hard to find. The earliest that I could find anything was around 1868. Morgan Bailey and Reverend John D. Tipton were the first to own land in the cove. Until the early 1900s, Lost Cove was not claimed by either North Carolina or Tennessee, a disputed territory. Despite that, the town kept growing. At the height of the town, there was close to 100 people that lived here at one time. And so what you don't see is that there were around 13 to 15 houses as well. The name Lost Cove came long before the town was abandoned. Lost Cove's always been Lost Cove. Smith says there are many theories to how the town got its name. Especially when it became moonshining, um, because of the disputed territory, they were actually charged in a court of law for being in the disputed territory and so hence Lost Cove. Smith says moonshining enabled Lost Cove residents to earn extra income and their isolation often protected them from the revenuers enforcing liquor laws. The town became practically self-sustaining. Within 20 years, a church was established. The first known one was built in 1880 and it was called Tipton's Chapel. It became Mountain View Free Will Baptist in the early uh, 30s. The building also served as the Lost Cove schoolhouse. One of the resources they always imported teachers. They would actually live with Velmer Bailey's family as well as um, Chester Bailey's family during the week and on the weekend they would go home. Students grade K through 11 learned all in one room. My name is Teresa Miller Bowman and my father lived in Lost Cove and grew up in Lost Cove and my grandparents my mother came there as a teacher, and that's where my father and she met. By that point, Bowman's father had moved out with the Army. They had the June meeting, which is the decoration and preaching services and all at the cemetery, and people who had moved away would come back in. And my father didn't live there anymore. He lived in Irwin. Bowman would eventually move in temporarily with her mother when she was asked to teach again. And that's when I was three. And so we were staying with Carrie and Chester. Eventually, lumber became the primary source of income for the residents. Smith says the first sawmill was built in Lost Cove in 1905, another after 1910, and yet another in 1939 after the second burned down. The sawmills drew more people into the cove, creating more families. My name is Roy Lee Guthrie. I was born in Lost Cove in 1941. My mother was a bright, true to bright and she was raised in Lost Cove. Guthrie's parents met in the Cove after his father and grandfather moved in for work. Granddaddy Guthrie went in there with his logging and uh, Daddy went in with him. Timber had also brought Bowman's grandparents into Lost Cove. They moved up there for work. They were logging and doing timber. Despite increased connections to the outside world, the families mostly produced their own food. That self-sufficiency couldn't last forever. Eventually, Lost Cove became just the memory it is today. The demise of Lost Cove can't be blamed on just one factor, but many chipping away at their small society. Join us at 11 as we explore those factors that led to the end of Lost Cove.